is just an introduction how the iron is one puzzle and how the iron is uh, sharing in the nutrition. It was uh, perhaps many years ago when Danon started the campaign against iron deficiency. And I wondered at that time why Dan is using this weapon. I think this is very important weapon. And we have to know what is the sharpness of this weapon. And here it is. I prefer to say this word. The iron is a maestro and a player is doing both things. I, I should take it in every point, but of course I not cover everything. And if I'm saying any word about the art, it will be just an introduction to what will be going on later. So this is uh, my agenda. It's not working. And you know this is the iron in our book. <laughs> This is the iron in our earth. It is all over there. It's not only in human, but it is as well on earth. So it is the uh, power, and we have uh, to obey the power. What it is in our body? What is the, the contents of iron in our body? This is the content. If we are looking to an adult, it will be like that. And uh, if it is in healthy infant term, it will be like that. So remember, every kilogram of his body is harboring 75 milligram of iron, and 70% of this is in the human. The iron requirement is not all over the same during our life, but at birth, it starts by very minimal amount. And this is the amount in the first six months. It is 0.27 milligram per day. And then after, it will be 11. Know the difference? And for preterm, it will be 2 to 4 milligram per kilogram. And in adult life, it is, or in one to three years, it is 7 milligram. So the main part of the requirement is here. The crucial is here. The importance is here. So we have to be alert or aware of this. This is the requirement and if we know that the very important period of iron is between 7 and 12 months. This is very, very important compared to 1 to 3 years or three to six years, the important is in six to 12 months. So we start winning by this, and this is very important. The prevalence of iron deficiency is not all over the world the same. Of course, we have in our countries, in the Middle East, the highest prevalence. In Africa, we have the highest prevalence. Still in America, in uh, uh, Asia, in Europe, but uh, we have the biggest amount of iron deficiency. And here, the red zone. The red zone, not of uh, you understand what is the red zone, but here for iron deficiency, this is the red zone. And uh, here is the burden of iron deficiency. And it is uh, between 50 to 60 percent almost in this group of population where the iron is deficient. Iron deficiency is a real problem in our country. And if we get this, we can say that at least 30 percent of school children in Egypt are iron deficient. And uh, this is one of the common nutritional problems. And one third failed to meet 50% of the recommended requirements. And in Egyptian adolescent, it is 46%. And again, it's very 
striking that we can see that the level of iron deficiency is not different between those who are highly socioeconomic and low socioeconomic. The low stratum is about 52 and the high stratum is about 43. So it's not a matter of deficient intake. It is a matter of uh, mal intake or misuse or the way they are, they are taking, which is the bioavailability. This is the number, and this is the number, and it's totally different. Excuse me, I take some water. So what do you think the difference between them? The high stratum already receiving enough, but they're still having this kind of iron deficiency. Why? We'll see about all this in the mechanism, in the absorption, in the distribution of iron, and how the distribution is affected. And uh, there is one only way to understand that what is going in the body is exactly the same of what is out of the body. This is in the body, jejunum, about one to two milligram. And what is excreted or lost is exactly the same. So we have either deficiency of the intake, or there is something ongoing in this absorption, or there is excessive loss from the other hand. So we have three ways of deficiency. If you are no, not taking enough, perhaps because not enough meat, perhaps because we are not taking iron at all, or we have to uh, lose some blood in stool, in urine, or whatsoever. That's why the iron deficiency will be there. The iron absorption is really a puzzle and a very good way to understand why sometimes iron deficiency occurs without even the deficiency in the intake. Number one, the iron is either him or none him. And if it is non-heme, it should be like uh, ferrous and not ferric. It should be in acidic medium, not in alkaline medium. It should be going through dimethyl transporter. And uh, there is someone else competing for this. Dimethyl transporter is the transporter of other metals like calcium and they compete with each other. If anyone is bigger than the other, it will fight for the push inside. So the dimethyl transporter is the same for calcium and for iron as well. And then after it goes through the uh, ferroportin, and the ferroportin goes to the transferrin, and the transferrin goes back to the liver and uh, prevent uh, the absorption by it, by increasing the hepcidin, and this hepcidin blocks the door in front of the iron to go through. And in all this way, if I'm having something to hinder the absorption of the iron, just here, like that, it will be, for example, like aluminium. You remember the file you are wrapping in, if you are excessively using this, it will prevent the absorption of iron. If you are remembering, if you are giving the iron with excess milk, which is always the condition when I'm giving iron, please give this with milk. This will prevent the absorption of iron. So it's very important in this point that the iron should not be given with these things. Number three here is this part, which is the phytate, the tannate, and the antacids. Remember, the iron should be, for example, naked to go in through the dimethyl transporter. If you are wrapping this in a way by cellophane or whatever you are wrapping, you will prevent the absorption. This is exactly what happened with the phytate. If you are covering the iron with the phytate, with the oxalate, or anything that is covering the iron, it will not be absorbed. This is the answer of the spinach. The sp many people think that the spinach is very important as iron source. 
No, remember, the Spanish is uh, wrapped in phytate, in oxalate, in pre it prevents its absorption. Beans, beans is not a very good source of iron because it is wrapped. And if sometimes you want to increase the bioavailability of these things, you have to remove the wrap, like phytate, you have to peel it, you have to add acids to change the ferrous into ferric and to avoid giving milk to, at the same time and to avoid to, avoid to give uh, ten, uh, anything like tannic acid, like tea at the same time. This is very important for the cause of iron deficiency in our country. And here is the illustration of the bioavailability. Whenever it is in uh, the ferric state, it will not be absorbed. Whenever there is phytate, phosphate, and mate, there will be no absorption. On the other hand, vitamin C, meat, and gastric HCL will be better. The breast milk is readily absorbed than the cow milk. Why? The breast milk is acidic. The iron is ferrous. It is, low, it is already low in amount, but still it is readily bioavailable. And here the bioavailability. The iron bioavailability is uh, high in meat and uh, less in uh, cereals, uh, fruit and milk. And at the same time, the food taken by the, ch the, the infants is <coughs> higher bioavailability is 10 to 15% of the intake, while on the other hand, the lower bioavailability is most of the intake. So the iron deficiency is not because of only the deficient iron, but low bioavailable iron. Of course, you are all aware of this, the causes of iron deficiency, starting by the decrease intake, increased loss, malabsorption, cow milk allergy, and less bioavailability. In our country, because I was asked about the iron status in our country. Remember every time in our country it is not only the hookworm, like parasitic infestation, it is not only the undernutrition, they are not taken enough, but the habit of the mother, she should follow the uh, meal with tea. Always drink tea after, or drink coffee after, this makes you more alert. This makes the baby more alert. This is the tradition. She's always doing this. She prefers always to give more diluted, juicy drinks for the babies to calm the baby. And this is deficient in iron. This is not only the way of calming, but it is of depriving the baby. And uh, the excessive loss is very, very important. It goes because uh, because I told you what is going in, it should be exactly like what is going out. And here is uh, the causes of uh, excessive blood loss. Excessive blood loss may be just cow milk allergy. And I have with me my dear professor, Mustafa Lord. And he found a lot, a lot of cases which just call it to be cow milk allergy. If they are losing enough blood in their stool, they will be iron deficient. And on the other hand, celiac disease. 15% of iron deficiency anemia, we followed them and found many of them had uh, celiac disease. So the celiac disease may be not a celiac only, but, but like iron deficiency anemia. Bleeding disorders or parasitic infestation may be other concerns. And here is the allergy, celiac, parasitic, and bleeding. The impact of iron. Why we are so much caring about iron? Why iron is very important? Is it that magic in our life? Yes, it is. It's not only in your blood. It's not only in your muscle. It is in your heart. It is in your brain. It is in your immunity. So it should be all over. And this is the play. He is in your muscles. He is in your blood. But still, it is in your heart as myoglobin. And a 
maestro. All the functions. It's not only included in the hemoglobin, but it plays a maestro, orchestrates, organize everything related to oxidative energy production, oxygen transport, mitochondrial respiration, inactivation of harmful, harmful oxygen, and DNA synthesis. This is your brain. And that's why I appreciate what Dunham has done for Iron to be in the morning. You had enough breakfast, you had enough iron, you are alert enough, so your brain is working. Your brain is working in the morning. It has many effects on the brain, like dopaminergic effects, DNA synthesis, neurotransmitter, lipid metabolism, and neuronal differentiation. Everything going in the brain, it is important for it, the eye. Micronutrients, immunity, are very important again, and the eye is one as a maestro for immune modulation. That's why in the mitochondria, the oxidative effect, respiratory birth in the mitochondria is important the eye is important for it. And here I call it the maestro. Antioxidant. How many radicals are going through my body and harming my body? And the effect of this is cancer. And how many I can block this by many enzymatic genes? It is the eye responsible for this. So the iron is already prevented for infection and prevented for malignancy. And here I have a case, what I call it, everyday story. How many of you are clinicians? Raise your hand. How many of you can see this case? How frequent, every day? I challenge you every day that you see the same case. This is everyday story about a 10 months old baby presenting with pallor, lassitude, repeated infection, the mother coming. Tell me what is wrong about this immunity? Why he is so much bad? Why he is every day getting this kind of infection? By medical history, you ask the mother, and you got the answer like this. This is normal delivered infant with uneventful postnatal history. He was exclusively breastfed, but until the age of four months, my mom said, you have to wean your infant. He is too old. He has to take something. So she started by the smooth thing. You have the smoothest is yogurt. Always the mother prefer the yogurt because it's very quick, very smooth, and you can do it very easy. So she started by yogurt. Why not some biscuits here? Why not? Why not? With the juicy sweet, it gives him energy. Why not? You give juice. Yes, this is okay. And uh, a little bit of diluted caramel because you are too tired. You will not give him all the time your breast. This is very bad. You have to give some replacement with milk, but the milk is heavy, so you have to dilute it a little bit. So she starts to dilute. What happened to the baby? The infant start complaining of attacks of colic. He's colicky all the time. So the mother is so much offended, and she responded by giving tea. Yes, this is calming, and you can give tea. This is the mom, she said. And, uh, Decreasing the extra feeds a little bit and more dilution of cow milk, perhaps it's very, very uh, heavy, as she say, and you have to dilute it more. This is everyday story. When you see this case and uh, the picture is like this, he's attentive, he's alert, but he doesn't want to look at you. He doesn't want to have any stimulation. And he is a little bit pale, but no other complexion. He doesn't have jaundice or something like that. Respiratory, there is respiratory infection because she's coming with infection. 
and fever, running nose, cough, no organomegaly. It's not a case of anemia or organomegaly, it's simple anemia. And no dark stools, no blood loss. And uh, the tongue looked like that, glazed. She is always saying that he has money gazes, but he has, he has glazed tongue. No. And uh, the nails, as if you are cutting his nails, no, it's shortly cut like this. This is the typical example of what you see for iron deficiency at that time. When you make the investigations, you will get the case, the hemoglobin low, RDW is high, MCV is low, MCH is low, while the count a little bit high and platelet again is high, which is the counterpart of the hemoglobin. Remember, the hemoglobin is low, the platelet is up, and all the time the mother is coming, why the platelet is so high? He is getting thrombosis? No, he is not, because this is the window, this is the mirror of the hemoglobin. The hemoglobin is low and the platelet is always up, it's stimulated. And then you continue by doing iron, total iron binding capacity and serum ferritin, and you got iron low, iron binding capacity high, and serum ferritin is low. And I was arguing yesterday with Professor Ziegler on relying only on ferritin. If it is low, it's okay, but if it is not low, this is not against. And you have to make the equation between iron and total iron binding capacity to get what we call transferrin saturation to be sure that this is iron deficiency as the picture like this. And uh, this is what I'm saying. You are not doing only the ferritin or total iron binding capacity alone, but you are doing the whole. The iron saturation or transferrin saturation is the index between the iron and the iron binding capacity. It should be less than five. Many cases, if they don't have less than five, between five and 20, this is okay, but after 20, this is never iron deficiency. And remember, every time you are doing iron assay, you should stop iron 24 hours before. You should not give iron today, and by night you assay the iron. You should stop it all over. If you are doing this, you are saying what you are giving to the baby. So you have to stop it. Then this baby proved to be anemic, iron deficiency, and he is getting enough iron, 2 mg per kilo per day with folic acid, and one month to treat, but we continue for three months to replenish the stores. Remember, the ferritin is very low, so you have to fill this store with the, the iron. What went, went wrong in this infant? This is the story, what went wrong from our point of view. Is it early weaning, four months? It is. Replacement of breast milk, which is uh, the gift of God, and we are replacing by chunk. Early introduction of cow milk. Use of diluted iron, but no use of iron-rich food. Use of the juicy food and use of tea. Here is the puzzle of iron and milk. And again, the breast milk is low in iron, and cow milk is low in iron. But the breast milk is very important to be low in iron. And I every day emphasize this, it should be low in iron. For two reasons. One, the baby already has his iron requirement in his liver, so it is contained in himself. And number two, to keep lactoferrin always hungry, to keep it devoid of iron. If I am giving iron, I'm satisfying lactoferrin, it will be never ready to get the microbial invasion. It will not give anything for the immunity, it should be always kept hungry. So the iron in breast milk should be always low. But, on the other hand, it is acidic because of lactobacillus, it is readily absorbed. It should be like this. So it is more readily available. This is against the cow milk. Low iron, exactly like this of breast milk, but low, no lactoferrin. It is alkaline. Remember what we know about milk alkali syndrome. You remember this? Excessive intake of milk in adults. This is alkaline, medium. It is 
lactobacillus free. It's not the lactobacillus. No acidification, so it is less bioavailable. And the average human milk in such instances, it is 0.35 milligram per liter. And if you remember that what I need in this period is very limited in the first six months. So why not cow milk? Because low iron, low content, alkaline, less bioavailability, more diluted, so it's lower content, and again, sometimes it is the cause of cow milk allergy. And in the first six months, this is okay for breast milk. But should I continue after the six, milk, the six months with breast milk alone, should I? Here is the answer. Breast milk is not enough. But again, the cow milk is not good. So why the breast milk is not enough? This is what has been said by Professor Ziegler. There is something like energy gap. There is something like increased requirement after the age of six months and one year. The breast milk is enough to suffice. It is not enough, it's not sufficient to give this amount to the baby. If you are giving only cow milk, you are just giving 31% of energy and uh, protein 38%, vitamin A 45, and maybe vitamin C it is enough. Maybe a Professor Beer will answer this, but still it is not sufficient. Don't stop it, but it's not enough. You should give something else. And here, if you are giving iron by breast milk and by uh, uh, formula fat, the breast milk is not enough for the first day. But in formula fat, it might be sufficient in the next following months. The best iron. What is the best iron? Remember the bioavailability. It's not the best iron to give spinach. This one is uh, claiming that he is enough. I don't know if the picture there is, uh, you, you can see it. This is one uh, muscle man holding a spinach can and saying I'm strong enough. No, this is wrong, of course, because he is weak. He's not that much. He is not that powerful. He seems as if he has it, something, but he's very weak. And here is the lean stick is the best. And uh, the chicken le next. And the, the whole meal, meal uh, bread, meat bread, and uh, boiled fish. Cooked spinach is only 2%. So don't ever be deceived by giving just vegetable. And this is enough. It's not enough. There is something around, there is cellophane around, and remember this picture. It's not the matter I'm wearing the shoes, but it suits me or not. Spinach is not suitable. And again, this kind of milk is not suitable. And the iron should not be given with alkaline medium. Remember the transporter, the dimethyl transporter, like two guys going through a uh, some port, one is big, fatty, and one is tiny. Who's going to go inside? Who is going for the age of one year? Use iron-rich food, grading from vegetables, perhaps fresh foods, cereals, and meat. I, I don't know if the meat now uh, gains the same uh, success or not, but it's still there. And the iron medicine is needed. If needed, avoid calcium intake as milk and add vitamin C as fresh juice or medicinal. And don't give sweetened.